Join us on Paranormal M, your portal to the inexplicable. Subscribe, drop a comment, help us out, turn on notifications, and be the first to explore the unexplained with our newest tales. Get ready for a roller coaster of emotions as we unravel mysteries together. Mommy, the man at the window made her cry. The first incident which happened before Godzilla was when I was very young. I shared a room with my sister. I was startled awake but didn't know why. I looked over at my sister who was sound asleep and immediately realized what woke me up. Something was scratching at my window, but not normal scratching. It was almost like when someone's keying a car. The scratching ran along my windows as if someone was walking with a key against it. Problem is, my windows were high up and it would take a seven foot tall person to do that. I was shocked it didn't wake my sister. I remember being so scared that I couldn't move. The keying of the windows proceeded down to each window of each room of the house, and incredibly, I could hear it the whole time. My brother's room, he didn't wake up. The bathrooms, the living room, etc. It finally ended at my parents' room. There, finally, I heard my mother mutter something to my dad. Couldn't understand what she said, but they went back to sleep immediately. Surprised, I fell back asleep also and never mentioned it again. So many little things happened before I became an adult. My sister and I spotting something strange in the sky in broad daylight and no one else noticing. A giant doll of mine ending up in weird places as if she walked. My cat always sensing movement the same time as me out of the corner of my eye. So many things. Half were just a blur with time, but as I grew up, they kept happening. My adult memories of newer incidents are far sharper in my brain. Not much happened in my teen or early adult years. I was so busy with school, marriage, and building a life that I forgot about it. Until one day a reminder of my past experiences happened. We just bought a house. My husband and I were fighting about it if he should have played golf the next day or not. I didn't want him to, but he wasn't having it. We laid down in our tiny house to go to sleep, and all of a sudden we heard this loud crash. We ran out to the living room, and what did we see? His golf clubs were strewed about everywhere. It looked like someone had picked them up and threw them across the room. Guess someone or something was on my side of the argument. I let him play anyway. Mommy, the man at the window made her cry. Part 2 One night my husband and I were woken by a popping sound and something falling to the floor. Lots of somethings, in fact. We ran toward the noise and noticed in the kitchen that the plastic cups drying in the rack were popping out of their holding position and falling into the floor. It was right before our eyes, not dishes, not silverware or anything else, just cups. And it didn't stop until the last one fell. A few weeks, maybe a month later, I was awoken by my two pugs barking. I figured there was an animal outside nearby, so I got up. Hubby was still asleep, and I noticed the direction they were barking, and again it was my kitchen. This time the loaf of bread that was sitting on the counter was floating a few inches above it. Then it dropped to the ground, and hard enough to damage it. Now all of these things, including the golf clubs, might not be that exciting, but the incidents always followed an argument about said subjects with my husband. You already know the backstory of the golf clubs, but the cups argument was my husband telling me before we went to bed that we should put the dishes away. I asked him why and what could really happen to them if we waited till morning. The bread? I yelled at him to put it in the fridge and he forgot. Was something trying to put a wedge between us? I don't know. I'm sure a few things, though. At least, that I can't remember, but that happened the next year or so. 
But the next incident that sticks in my mind was when I was around eight months pregnant with my firstborn. My husband wasn't home and it was around 9 or 10 p.m. I was watching TV with my dogs in the recliner. My male dog would never leave my side when I was pregnant. All of a sudden the male starts growling at the room where the nursery set up. It is dark in there. He keeps growling and now my female starts barking. I start getting a weird feeling in my stomach, a deep weird feeling in the pit of it. Then the baby started moving more than usual. This went on for a bit and I was so scared that I just sat there and stared at the room. As quick as it all started, it was even quicker when it stopped. I called my husband and asked him to come home. He did because he could tell by my voice that something else happened. The rest of my pregnancy was uneventful. The day comes when we bring my son home. No problems until about two months in. I start to notice like a pattern with my son and him waking up at exactly 3.23 a.m. every night. He had a baby monitor in his room and I would wake to his giggles and laughter. Now you're probably thinking that's so much better than waking up to screaming and crying, but it wasn't. You see, I start to realize that the giggling and laughter sounds familiar. It sounds just like when someone he knows is peeking over his crib and making him laugh. Once I realize this, I start running to the room, and as soon as I turn on his light and run to his crib, I notice him laughing and looking in another direction. Then where I'm standing, he keeps laughing and just cooing in that direction until I startled him with my voice. Then he looks at me and smiles or cries, depending on what he wants. This went on for a while, even when I started leaving his light on. I even tried having him sleep with us, but he just wasn't comfortable with that, I guess. Well, I figured he liked whoever was visiting him and meant him no harm, I hope. It slowed down and stopped completely once he was in his first big boy bed. Once he started talking, he was able to tell me if anything was happening. I'd find him in his room with his toys, laughing and smiling at his window. I asked him why he was laughing, and he would just point to the window and say the man was funny. What man? I'd ask. The man in the window. It was scary enough that he possibly saw a man in the window. But what was scarier is that it was on the second floor of my house. There's no way a man could be there. And this happened often, but again, he seemed happy with the man in the window, until I had my daughter. Unfortunately, it was a different situation for my daughter. Once she started sleeping in the nursery, she started waking up at the same time every night, 3.23 a.m. She wouldn't laugh, though. She would cry. And with this, I put her back in our room for another year until she was ready for her own bed. Once that happened, it was uneventful for a year or so. One night when I was in the kitchen cooking, hubby wasn't home yet. I heard my daughter crying and saying, go away. I ran in and asked her what was wrong and all she could do was point to the window. But her brother, who was in there too, said that the man was back and he didn't like my daughter. Well, from then on, I told my daughter to play in the living room near me so the man would leave her alone. A few years went by. A few things happened, but not bad. We ended up selling that house and moving into a bigger one. All was well with the kids. Nothing else happened to them, and they're adults now. Although I do notice that my son has a lot of interest in paranormal stuff, but it seemed that whatever it is was not done with me. From about 2001 onward, Every time someone close to me died, I would get a visit from them within a week after their death. Sometimes they would say something, sometimes not. It was always right before he fell asleep. My dad was one of them. A few days after he died, he visited me. He looked into my bedroom and smiled. I asked how he was feeling because he was in so much pain before he died. He simply waved his hands down his body and gave me the thumbs up which I took as he was feeling good. Others visited and I was honest with my whole family and told them what had happened. 
friends, pets, and my mother-in-law. She kept turning the hall light on, which she would do when she was alive as well, but my mom didn't. About two months after my sister and I were cleaning out my mom's room, she asked if my mom visited me after dying. I said no, told her that it actually bothered me. Was she mad? Did I do something? My sister told me that she probably just wasn't ready to contact me. Well, I got home that night and mom felt it was time. My husband and I were watching TV and we started hearing music. Like from a music box. It was coming from my china cabinet. I walked over and realized that my very old music box that my mother had given to me when I was a child was playing music. What's strange is that it hadn't worked for many, many years. I cherished that music box actually because it was a gift from my mom. She knew I loved it, and I really believed that that was her way of saying goodbye to me. The visitations still happen, but not often. I still see movement out of the side of my eye, but it has slowed down along with all the other paranormal activity. I might have been to another reality. Around a week ago I had a dream, and since it has been a week already I cannot recall the exact events, but what I can unearth is vivid. It was set in a very different place, a place that looks dystopian and I was running away from what seems to be a governing entity of the area. A group of men, just like how FBI agents chase fugitives. That kind of vibe. I was running with a girl. We climbed on top of several overhead railings, parkour style, until we perched on a high ledge overlooking a pair of railroad. At that point, I can feel the overwhelming dread. The girl looked at me and said, The only way to get out of here is to jump when the train comes. I nodded, and just a few moments later, a huge train came roaring our way. I jumped, but shocked to realize that the jump was pretty much premature, and I'm about to get hit by this train. I just closed my eyes as the train's front lights blinded me and then poof. I woke up gasping for air. I went out of my room and sat on a chair, trying to make sense of that dream. The last events were too real, not to mention the timing for it to be a dream. I'm not sure if I was supposed to die so we can get out of here like the girl said. Or we were supposed to maybe get on top of that train to get away, quote-unquote, but we failed. But then again, I have no way of knowing. I don't remember seeing the girl jump either. Fast forward to today, October 25th, 3 p.m. in the Philippines. From the Philippines. Or 3 a.m. Eastern Time. I was walking out of my room greatly bothered because I had to redo that same dream, but with a different scenario. Same dystopian setting. I know it's the same because I saw the exact same street island and the same group of men running toward me and the fear of being caught feeling was taking over. To make the long story short, I got caught, but the people who caught me were surprisingly gentle. They didn't torture me or anything like that, they just contained me and led me into a huge room with lots of bunker beds. I was imprisoned along with other people who don't look like criminals at all. Most of them were girls, and the men were also very gentle too. And that brought me a feeling of security. Almost like it made me happy at that moment. Everyone was wearing a uniform with a light shade of brown. A warden came in and announced, or at least who I assumed would be a warden-type figure. We have a new member. Please introduce yourself. I mentioned my name and I joked a little bit and ended with me rapping to another inmate's beatboxing. Everybody was having a good time. Then lights out. I pretended to be asleep because I was planning to escape and look for the girl in the past dream so I can get answers. I was excited for that, because I might prove something here. And this is as I was fake sleeping, waiting for the right hour. Someone or something stood beside my bed, stabbed me in the chest, and poof! I woke up gasping for air. I walked out of my room and I saw my mom watching a video of the 3 o'clock prayer. I looked at the clock, and it was exactly 3 p.m. I need thoughts on this, 
The timing and the reason of me snapping out of both dreams of being killed felt real the first time and now it happened again. I'm convinced it's not just a dream. I also have hopes of knowing if someone out there had a similar dream, hence me stating the date and time. What was in that house? So this happened when I was in 8th or ninth grade. My friend and her family had gone on vacation, and she had enlisted me to come over daily and feed and check on her cats. The first couple of days my mom came with, then the third day my mom went by herself. I was babysitting all day. Then the fourth day I went by myself as well, and her house was three blocks away so I walked. Now I had been in this house probably a hundred times at this point, so I had no reason to be timid or scared. And at first I wasn't. I just went in, went around the corner of the kitchen, and switched out the water and gave the cat some fresh food. Then I came back into the living room and snuggled the nice kitty. I say that because their older cat was seriously one of the meanest cats I've ever known. Hated everyone. So I was totally fine with her hiding and not wanting attention. I was about to leave, but then remembered that my friend said I could borrow some books from her room. We were both bookworms. So I went down the narrow hallway to her room real quick, started looking through her bookshelf, and this put my back to the doorway, by the way. I had been browsing for a few minutes when very suddenly I felt cold and terrified. I was sure someone was standing in the doorway behind me. It took me several moments, but I finally summoned the courage to turn around. As I looked at the doorway, it was as though someone or something had just darted out of sight. At this point, I decided, screw the books. Nope, the hell out of there. I ran out of the room, back down the narrow hallway, into the living room, into the front door. The whole time it felt like someone was behind me. I didn't even turn around until I was outside. And then, just to lock the door, then I ran home. I didn't say anything to my mom for a few weeks, but I did make excuses for her to go with me every day after that until my friend returned. A couple of weeks later, I decided to bring it up to my mom when we were driving somewhere. I thought it could be something to laugh about, like, ha 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 ha, I freaked out for no reason, silly me. But my mom just got really quiet, turned down the car radio and said, Honey, the same thing happened to me the day before when I went alone. I didn't say anything to you because I didn't want you to be scared going over there. thought it was just my imagination playing tricks on me. Needless to say, my blood ran cold and the experience has stuck with me all these years. Things that might be relevant. The house was built in the early 50s. My friend at the time was into Ouija boards and the like, but never took it seriously. I also found out years later that her mom was emotionally abusing her. Thankfully, she ended that toxic relationship and is doing so much better. So has anyone else experienced anything like this or have theories as what happened? Strange Sounds and Voices at Night so I want to preface this by saying this happened a few years ago with only me and my now ex being the only ones that have witnessed it. I mainly want to put my little encounter out there to see if anybody has similar stories. And I do remember looking this up a while back, but with no answers. Here's my story. So this happened on a usual weekday. It was nighttime around 10 or 11 on a summer night. It gets pretty muggy at night in my part of the world, so I like to keep the windows open at night when it's more cool outside. And this was one of those nights. Me and the girlfriend were getting ready to go to bed as usual, for her, this time. But I'd cuddle her until she sleeps so I can get up and fuck around the house like a cat at 3 a.m. As we were in bed, it's pitch black. She likes it dark and quiet. I sure as fuck don't and the only light is the street light from the outside of my window. About only 20 minutes of this, and I was kind of in that state where you're dozing off, but not quite about to knock out anytime soon. 
I also want to clarify that I do have sleep problems and have the occasional sleep paralysis and hypnagogic imagery since I was like 12. So at around this time is when I hear these faint noises that sounded like it's coming from outside. The best way I can explain it, it's like a human vocal singing making a he noise and then a haw noise. The he noise sounded higher pitched and kind of like a woman, while the haw noise was quite deep and sounded like a man. At first second I chalked it up to my brain making me hear things because of the stage of the sleep that I was in. But me being paranoid, I went to caution mode. I opened my eyes and lifted my head up to look toward the window while I was still laying down. The girlfriend noticed this, asked what was wrong. I then responded with, Do you hear that? She said, Hear what? Immediately after she said that, we heard the noise again, but ever so slightly with more volume. The same pitch, but sounded closer than before. That's when we both sat up on the bed. Me almost leaping the fuck out in fear. We both just were frozen there for a good few seconds, looking at each other with that what the fuck was that face. Only about ten seconds or so after this, the noise came back, same perfect pitch and length. But let me tell you, when I say it was louder, this time it sounded like whatever made this sound was right outside the window. I went in panic mode and jumped out of bed, turned the lights on while the girlfriend was still in bed because apparently she wasn't shooketh like I was. We both went, yo, what the fuck was that? Is that a person? And then just stood frozen for a bit. The sound was back yet again after another ten seconds, as if it was clockwork, but now fainter than before. This is when I decided now was a good chance to peep out of the window and see what kind of alien Slenderman multidimensional creatures making this noise. But there's nothing outside. After doing this, I didn't hear it again, and I was afraid it's because whatever it was spotted me. Maybe just stopped doing it after that. The girlfriend was just sort of chuckling in disbelief while I was about to poop myself. It took me a while afterwards to feel comfortable enough to keep my window open, let alone sleep without the TV on. But that was the one and only time this has ever happened to me. Dear Ghost Girl That Grabs My Sister's Ankles at Night We hadn't had an experience in a couple of months. I thought that maybe it had been moved on. But that's not the case. I've been feeling super uneasy and unsafe in my house, especially at night. I guess for a good reason. Two nights ago I heard a young girl screaming from my parents' bedroom. I stood there trying to figure out what to do. I was home alone. Soon after, music started playing. I thought maybe it was my phone, but it wasn't. I never found the source of this music. My parents soon arrived home and I left for the bathroom. I would locked myself in there. Probably about five nights ago I had a dream about a demonic young boy. He was like dimmed gray and black. Even his skin was gray and black. He was wearing old worn out clothes and had bright yellow glowing eyes. I saw him walking up the stairs toward me in my dream. The lights flickered around us. I screamed at him in the name of Jesus to leave me alone and he did. He disappeared into thin air. I woke up around five totally petrified from the dream because it felt so real. I checked my phone to see and it was like five o'clock. I felt like I was being watched, so I just sat there for a bit. I had no idea what was going on outside of my room. In the living room, my sister and mother were sleeping. My sister explained to me that she woke up and felt something grabbing her ankles and was terrified. She had her blanket covering her face mostly, so you couldn't really see everything, but she said that she did have a hole in the blanket where she saw exactly what was grabbing her. She said she saw a little girl with black hair, a deformed, rotting face, and a white dress, no eyes. She said she closed her eyes because she was too afraid to look at it anymore. Then she woke up, and again she said she never remembered going back to sleep, but she woke up again and she knew that she was awake the other time, so she was confused. 
She then saw the little girl for a second time standing in the living room. Then the little girl ran into the kitchen, back and forth and back and forth before she disappeared. My sister checked the time that she woke up for the second time around five o'clock. Was this a coincidence? Both waking up at five? Could be, but I felt like it wasn't. My sister said that sometimes the ottoman in the living room where the feet are, it shakes violently sometimes and that it wasn't the first time the little girl was there grabbing her feet. A few months ago she had sleep paralysis and that was the first time that she saw this little girl. She needs a new place to sleep. Obviously the living room isn't working for her. She had a dream where a bright red light shined from the living room and when she tried to enter, an angel threw her back and told her, Do not enter the living room, not at night. She woke up with the feeling of something watching her. Although I'm worried about her, I'm slightly glad that it's so violent with her. Oh. Perhaps not so violent. I don't know. Although I'm worried about her, I'm slightly glad that it's so violent with her and not me. Because if it was the other way around, a little bit ago, I had all of this terrifying stuff and she was getting dreams, and now I'm getting dreams that she's having terrifying stuff happen to her. It switched. Maybe it decided after five years that I needed a break. She's not as strong as I am, though. She doesn't know what she's dealing with or how to combat it, really. I grew up learning about the paranormal and dealing with experience after experience. But she never did. She just didn't want to know. After she was attacked at the asylum we went to, I feel like maybe things know that she's an easy target now. Haunted Asylum Attacked by a Demon This happened a couple of days ago. My family and I just went to an old asylum while on vacation. They had renovated it up a bit and put a couple of stores and a restaurant inside, so my father thought it would be a nice place to visit. <laughs> when we drove into the driveway, I was overcome with dizziness. I couldn't see straight and I could finish typing the message. I had just been typing before I pulled in. As I got out of the car, the dizziness subsided for the most part. We all went inside. It still looked like an asylum. The doors were like metal cage doors. The floor was old and cracked. The walls were old yellowed bricks, and there were entrances that were covered over with more bricks so no one could enter. As we began walking down the halls, I noticed something was off. The overall feeling in the place was just terrible. I started getting a headache, but it was only a minor one. I know spirits can give people headaches and stomach aches, so I wasn't that surprised. As I said, mine was minor, but I couldn't help but notice that my sister was getting worse and worse. As we continued down the hall, we stopped to look at one of the stores. There was an old-looking metal door that resembled something that would be in an animal cage. It was just a pitch-black empty room on the other side. I'd mentioned to my mother the feeling I had about the place, and so, as a joke, she held me close to the cage and said, Look in there. Do you see a ghost yet? As they were all laughing, I stood there in shock, for there was someone on the other side of that gate looking back at me. I ripped away from her grasp and kept walking down the hall away from the cage-like door. My sister was giving me a look, so I knew that she wanted to tell me something. We went off to the side and she told me she had a terrible, pounding headache. We kept walking as she told me about it, but I could see that she was definitely getting worse, like she didn't really know where she was going anymore. I took her outside the building for a minute to help her head and just kind of told her to pray and imagine a white light around herself. She did this and started to walk away from the building and her headache was getting better. My father scheduled for us to eat inside the building and our table was ready, so we were forced to go back inside. She told me her headache was even worse than before and that she was about to pass out, and also that the praying in the white light now made it worse. 
We were texting each other and she was telling me that she felt a strong pressure on her back and head. Soon enough I could see that she couldn't take it anymore, so I took her outside. My parents were furious, but only because they didn't understand. Once I took her outside she started to cry and shake, so I took her away from that building we went on a walk. We went across the street and I talked to her about how the Lord was with her. Her headache stopped and so did the pressure. Our parents texted us. Uh, excuse me. <laughs> I tripped. Our parents texted us and told us that the food was there, so we're either forced to enter the building again. I held her hands and prayed with her before we entered. We ate as fast as possible and got out even before our parents did. We drove off, but she still felt uneasy, and so did I. We got out of the car at our next destination, but it was almost like we were still in the asylum. My sister started crying and shaking again, and she just asked me if I could just make her kill herself. Well, I asked her why, and she told me that it was giving her suicidal thoughts, that it was making her depressed and draining her energy. I took her and my mom and dad, and we all prayed together over her. As I placed my hand on her head while praying, it was weird. I could feel it still there. It had followed us there. It thought she would be an easy target, and maybe she would have been if I wasn't there. Maybe that's what scares me the most. I'm not sure if it's gone or not, but when we arrived back at the hotel, I saw and heard someone following me in the hall. So I thought it was my sister, but when I turned around, no one was there. But that could have just been a different spirit. I'm pretty used to them now. Last night, my sister and I didn't sleep. We were kept awake all night. Maybe we were scared or maybe we were kept up by something else. Something dark. Something inhuman. I guess we'll never know. Knock, knock. It was morning. Maybe 10.30 or something like that. It was fairly bright outside, but not like a lot of sun, like a nice summer day. Kind of cloudy. Made the house look dark. We were late for an appointment, so my mother went out and drove the car up to the door so we could get in and go. We have a rather long driveway, so it was just my sister and I inside the house. She ran to my parents' bathroom to fix her hair. I stayed in the bathroom off the kitchen. I hadn't had many paranormal experiences for at least a week, so I was just randomly singing. And then, for no reason at all, I just started making up lyrics that weren't in the song. Kind of like, haven't seen you in a while, are you actually real? Yeah, you are, but maybe you should leave. Then I continued and said, go back to hell. After I said it, I knew that was a bad thing to say. Well, I was proven right. Seconds after a breath on my neck, then someone blowing into my ear, not softly, turned back and no one was there. Then there was two loud knocks on the door. I turned and before I had said anything, thinking it was my sister telling me that it was time to go, a woman's raspy voice said, no, as if it were saying that it, well, it wouldn't go back to hell. I opened the door and no one was there. I shut the door and continued to brush my hair. Then I opened the door and I saw my sister come around the corner. Are you ready to go? She said. Then Jay asked her, Did you knock on the door out there? She looked at me, like, Are you serious? No, we don't have time for this. We have to go. I agreed and went out the door. Later that night, I was in the same bathroom and my dad and sister were picking out a movie to watch. We have like 10,000 movies, so it took them a long time. I heard a knock on the door and I said, Hold on, I'm almost out. But then I was curious. So I opened the door anyway, no one was there. So I closed it and finished it and then walked into the living room. Did you guys knock on the door? I asked. No, we're trying to find a movie, they replied. We were here the whole time. Yeah, my God, they clarified. Okay, so it wasn't them, but maybe it was my mom. She knocks on the bathroom door to annoy me sometimes, but she always fesses up if it was her. I walked to her bedroom and said, well, she was just on her bed and she was sleeping. Huh? I said to myself. 
Well, I guess I had another one. As in, another paranormal experience. I walked upstairs to take a shower and I was starting to get undressed. By now I was wearing only my underclothes. And I heard something knock on the bathroom door upstairs. Which was the bathroom that I was in currently. I went to open the door because it likely would have been my sister. But I stopped before I touched the handle. If it were her... I would have heard her come up the stairs and open the door. I didn't hear walking on the stairs and the door to the stairs didn't open. You have a door downstairs and when you open it, there's stairs that go upstairs. Our house is old, so the stairs and the door both make a lot of noise. The house was built in the 1880s and just added on to over the years. Then I thought it was her, that raspy woman. I left the door closed and I said to myself, Wait, you're so stupid, it was just your cat. Your cat knocks up on all the doors all the time. Then I stood there thinking about it. Then went to text my friend. Then I heard someone jumping. It was on, I guess you could say, the top step. Then on the second top step, back and forth like they were jumping between the steps for fun. Then I heard something run up to the door. I looked at the bottom and there was a small shadow of where they were. Then they ran down the hall and up the hall, and of course I thought nothing of this because my cat does this all the time. Then it ran back up to the door, then back down the hall really fast and into my sister's room. It's just the cat, I said to myself. I turned around and basically shat my pants. I'd forgotten. The sink was on because my cat was drinking from the faucet. And so my cat's in the bathroom with me, but it's watching the door like it heard the same things I did. I looked at it and I went... Shit. I called my sister and I could hear the TV on in the background, which also meant it wasn't her. I said, come upstairs. She complained about it at first, but eventually complied. Then I took my shower. I didn't tell her what happened because she knows the house is haunted, but doesn't like me to tell her about what happens to me because it scares her. She's never had experiences to the extent that I have, except once. One time, when she was home alone, she heard a woman screaming. She heard it twice. And then she hid in a corner until we got home. Same thing happened to me about a week later. I only heard it once, but the memory will never leave me. It was one of the scariest nights of my life. So she's asked me not to share my stories with her. So I have to share them on here. And then have them on Paranormal M. Maybe it's not the house. Maybe it's me. The first one I have is from two months ago. I was in my room around 2.30 a.m. and only lights I had on were my fairy lights. I had a feeling I wasn't alone. But I didn't. Hera. Hmm. Feeling that it was nice, so I just sat there in fear. Hmm. Then I heard a woman breathing, and she said, Psst. I just ignored it and sat there until I could feel that she left the room. Two days after I went into the other part of the barn for fun. The barn has a part where animals and a part that's like work and machinery. I went into the machinery part. I started hearing a conversation coming from the second floor, so I called out and they stopped. Then I heard a huge crash and footsteps going toward the old ladder to get up there. I ran fast. Fast. The next time was a week after. I was sleeping on the other side of the house with my sister. We were both up for the most of the night, but... So when this happened, it maybe had just turned 3 a.m. Ironically, I started hearing crawling behind the couch where I was supposed to be sleeping around 2.57. It picked up at 3. I had a terrible feeling. After five minutes, the crawling stopped, but then I heard this ungodly growl. I asked my sister if she heard that too. She was in a sectioned off part of the room across from where I was, so she couldn't see me. She said that she heard it too. Then the feeling got more intense and I got up to run to her sectioned room thing. When I stood up, I saw a tall black bony figure standing hunched over by the door to the outside. I ran to her room and closed the door, but it was still there in the room with us. We called her parents and they finally made it to the other side of the house. 
but by the time they came out, it was already gone. Three weeks later, I went into the barn again. My friend wanted a tour. She was on FaceTime. I started getting that feeling again, and just as I was going to leave, I heard a dog barking from the next room. I knew very well there wasn't a dog, and that whatever it was was attempting to lure me over there, so I left. My mother had experiences like this when she was younger, but never like the ones I've had. I have a hard time believing that all four houses that we've lived in have been haunted. I don't even think it's the houses anymore, I think it's me. They can't sense the spirits usually, and they can't sense if they're good or evil like I can. I see them everywhere I go. Even if the house isn't haunted, they pay me a visit. It's like I attract them to me. I used to think that my house had a portal, but it's just me, isn't it? When I was first born, my parents put me in the nursery. The nursery became haunted. My mother had terrible nightmares in there if she ever tried to sleep. But only after I was born, and it became my room. She's been following me for days now. It started with her a few days ago. Obviously, I was in my room. In one of the oldest rooms in this old 1880s house. It was about 2 a.m. and I felt this sinking drop. The one I get when someone's there. I froze and waited. Then I heard clearly, psst. My heart began to race as I sat there in absolute fear I couldn't move. Eventually the sinking feeling subsided and I was left alone in the dark with my fear. She left the room but she was still there. That was the first encounter. After that, I would have to go feed the animals in the barn every morning. I was hearing footsteps above me on the second floor. There's this hole in the ceiling above where the cat's food is. I heard someone get on the floor next to the two-by-two two hole. I looked over and I saw a piece of hair hanging down. I froze and watched as it was pulled back up onto the second floor. I ran so fast out of there it wasn't even funny. I had to go feed the animals by walking through the pasture and going in from the back. After that, I started staying up later. I just couldn't sleep. I felt like something was watching me every freaking night. And this was two days ago. Starting to fall asleep, it was only 12.40, so it wasn't that late. I was almost asleep when I started hearing this children's music from my room. Then I saw the lady pulling me closer and closer until she was right in my face. I got snapped back to reality to freak me out, but I blew it off. I tried falling asleep again. The children's music started, and she pulled me closer and closer until she was in my face, snapped back again. I tried one more time, and the exact same thing happened. I felt my stomach drop. She was behind my door. I was so Terrified, I picked up my stuff and ran as fast as I could and went to another room downstairs to try to sleep. I finally fell asleep around 2.30. I'm not quite sure what she wants with me, and I'm not so sure I want to find out. All I know is that she's here, always around, just waiting. The woman in my house. The experiences started five months after we moved in. We moved in four or so years ago. The first time I thought something might be up is when my sister called my mother and I was terrified. We were on our way home from my orchestra practice. She called and you could tell she was shaking, but she wouldn't tell us what happened. All she would say is, just please hurry, please come home fast drive home to find her sitting in a corner of the living room. We asked her what had happened. She said that she had been watching her TV in there and on her phone. Then she heard some girl-like teenager scream. She said she thought it was part of her TV show because she was watching Glee. So then she paused her show and for a couple of seconds later, she heard it again. A teenage girl screaming bloody murder. 
I had a hard time imagining that that could actually happen. But I totally believed her. Because before this house, we lived in two other haunted houses. So not new to the paranormal, you could say. After that, my mom prayed throughout the kitchen and the living room and the family room. That only made it worse. About a week later, my sister was at basketball practice. I was home alone. I was walking through the kitchen when all of a sudden I stopped. Not even four feet away from behind a corner, I heard her screaming. But it wasn't a teenager. It was a woman, like in her 30s. I froze. I didn't know what to do, so I backed away slowly and hid in the stairwell to the upstairs. You see, in the dining room there's a door, and when you open it, it's stairs to the upstairs. So I sat on the third step and called my friend like five times. She didn't pick up the damn phone, so I called my mom. I could barely talk. I just told her that she needed to get home as fast as possible. I sat there for 15 minutes until she got home. I didn't even close the door because I didn't want to leave my dog. So I was terrified of the demon, but I wasn't going to abandon my dog, so I watched him. That was three years ago, but I can still hear her screaming. About a month later, I was rearranging my room. I was sort of turning, but I was turning and I saw this little girl in the mirror. Looked at me, but her eyes and mouth were blacked out. I said that it was just because I was turning, but I didn't realize till later when I was thinking about her blonde hair and blue shirt that I wasn't wearing a blue shirt. And after I saw her, I turned to see a woman. She was there for a second, but then gone. She looked like she was burned. I knew it was just trying to scare me. She had black tufts of black hair coming out of her head and skin hanging off her face because she was so badly burned. Bright green eyes and a long white dress. I kept walking. Didn't scare me much. I went downstairs and that's when I realized that the little girl in the mirror wasn't me. The next day I was walking my dog. We have this big 1880s dairy barn, so I thought I would explore it with my dog. It was sunny and cool. It was a nice morning for it. I opened the barn door and went in. Dust and old tools were everywhere. I proceeded to walk in further. There was one room that was pitch black. I peeked in. There was nothing but a table. Next to this room was a very heavy door with a lock. I fidgeted with the lock until it opened. I swung open the big door and it stuck. I guess the hinges were rusty. I went in with my dog and he sniffed around while I explored. There was an old beaten up refrigerator and a bathroom with cobwebs in the toilet and a lot of wood and dirt and rocks. Same as the sink. And the windows were broken. It looked like somebody threw rocks through the panes for fun. I went and stood next to a big beam in the middle of the room with my dog. I went on my phone to check my text messages. I didn't have many because it was 11 at the time. I put my phone away and I started to walk toward the door. It was closed. Huh, I thought I left this open, I said to myself. And I did. It stuck because of the hinges. I pushed and pushed, but it wouldn't open. Just then I heard big, heavy footsteps. The footsteps were coming from the second floor. I looked up and so did my dog. His hairs and his back stood up and he started growling and barking. I told him to shut up, moved him to the back of the room with him. The heavy construction boots followed me wherever I went. There was a small door toward the back of the room and I pulled the white string and it opened so me and my dog went into the next room. It was a small rock room with a hole in the wall that looked into a pitch black room on the other side of the door. I could crawl through there with my dog to escape, I thought. But I dismissed that idea quickly, because nope, just nope. There was a better option, a door to the outside pasture in the room. I went to the door and turned the handle, but it wouldn't budge. It was also jammed. The footsteps were getting closer, and there was a hole in the ceiling, so I needed to get out quick. I ran, kicked the door as hard as I could, and it flew open. I ran outside with my dog and didn't even bother to close the door. I looked up at the barn and one of the panels fell sideways. Then I saw a black figure run across it. I know what you're thinking. It was an animal. 
But that's not that case. The second floor of the barn is rotted out, and there was an animal up there or a person, they would fall right through. I went around the barn until I saw the barn door close that I entered through. I was almost feeling brave, so I went back in to see why the door wouldn't open. It was locked. The padlock was locked. I then ran out of my haunted barn with my dog and went back inside my haunted house. Over time, it got more frequent. I would see shadows, people dressed in old-timey outfits. I even got a couple of Polaroid pictures of them. In one, you can see a woman screaming and starting to disappear. And in the other, you can see a little ball of white light with two black dots for eyes. In the last one, I can't for sure say it's paranormal, but it's definitely weird. It's a room with 13 windows in the middle of a hot summer day. I took a picture of my dog and it's pitch black. I can only see the outline of his body and his glowing eyes and big mouth and sharp teeth. Next to him is this thick line of orange mist. Again, 13 windows, hot summer day. It was very light in there. My mom told me later that she kept checking on us that night because she heard a teenage girl screaming and she thought it was us. But when she got up there, we were never awake. Always happens around 2 or 3 in the morning. It was about a year and a half in where I decided to tell my mom everything that I had seen. And when I did, I regretted it. We were sitting on the couch in the living room. I told her everything I would seen and I started crying because it was a lot of emotion. I don't know why, but I felt pain and hatred. It was like I was feeling what they felt. She told me that it was okay and that she would pray and I said, No, don't. You made it worse last time. She said, How could praying make it worse? I replied, I don't know, I just don't want to find out. She went into the office where I heard the woman screaming, and all of a sudden I get this really bad feeling. She knelt down to pray, and I told her that she shouldn't. She didn't listen. She started to pray, and I felt the woman's presence in that corner. I knew she was here, and she was mad. My mom's eyes popped open. She looked at me concerned, and she kept praying. I started crying silently and walked over to her, and she was finished. I told her she shouldn't have done that and that the woman was mad at her now. She said that she didn't feel right and that she thinks I'm right and something didn't like that, mostly because the hairs on the back of her neck were standing. We went back over to the couch and I saw in the reflection of the window the burned lady. At least, well, that's what I call her. Ever since I saw her in my bedroom, that's what I call her. I saw her standing ten feet away by the TV. I told my mom, then two minutes later I saw her standing in the reflection again. She was much closer now. She was like four feet away. I then told my mom again. And then she told me she was tired and that she needed to go to bed, so I turned off the light. And as I turned, I saw a woman in her early thirties, maybe. She was wearing a navy blue old-timish dress, staring at me. Her brown hair was in a bun. She was holding her hands. Then she disappeared. I didn't tell my mom about that one. I saw the same woman looking out of the window at my sister's room upstairs a few months prior. I called her Fiona because of a dream I had. Recently, in the last five months, something terrifying happened. I was sleeping in my room upstairs and I heard a woman talking in my room. I was starting to wake up and then I was fully conscious. I was awake but I couldn't open my eyes until she finished talking. I don't know why, but before I was conscious, I don't know what she said. But once I was going to, well, well, I guess you could say once I was conscious, I heard the last couple things that she said. Go to hell. Then she said something in a different language. Capadarnum. My eyes shot open and I sat up quickly. I felt her presence in the room with me. She was still there. I searched up Capadarnum but got no result in any language. So I think it was a demon language. And perhaps it was just extinct. I texted my mom and called her, and she was awake already. She said that she had a bad dream. I called her and told her what happened and told her that I was standing in front of my keyboard, staring at me, and that it, well, 
I just needed to come downstairs. My mom was asleep in the living room, as she often does, because my dad snores so loud. I climbed out of bed and jogged out of my room and down the stairs. I can't explain to you how I can see something that didn't reveal itself to me. I just could. I think most humans can. I slept the rest of the night downstairs, and that was that. Later that morning, I was looking for a movie to watch. I was home alone, except for my mom. I heard a man's voice in my kitchen. It didn't say much at all. It just said, huh. Hmm. But that huh echoed through the whole house. I called my mom, but I was too scared to speak. So she got irritated and hung up. I then heard the medicine fall to the floor in there. Stood up, looked behind the corner. Nothing. No one was there. But the medicine was across the kitchen, and it had been thrown. I walked through the kitchen because I didn't feel him anymore in there, and I told my mom what happened. She was in her bed trying to sleep, so she wasn't happy that I bothered her. Later that night, she came to the kitchen and said, Why is my medicine on the floor? She was sick at the time, so it was like some old cold medicine of some kind. I told her the man threw it, so I don't want to move it because obviously he wanted it on the floor. She rolled her eyes and picked it up and took some, then went back to her room. This next one happened three months ago. I was talking while singing in the bathroom, making up words to the song, and for some reason said that I wished all the demons here would leave, and that it wasn't their house. I knew it was a mistake once it came out of my mouth. Not even five seconds later I felt someone in the room with me, and then someone was blowing in my ear to get me to look at the door. Once I did, there were two door-shaking knocks, then a raspy woman's voice said, No. It wasn't quick, but like a long no. I opened the door as fast as I could, but there was no one in there. My sister came out from my parents' bedroom, so she was like 20 feet away, and she said, Come on, we gotta go, we're gonna be late. I grabbed the keys, and we left for an appointment. The narrator had deja vu, and I told them what happened as they laughed. But then we all laughed. We're at the point where we've had so many experiences that it's funny, so not much scares us anymore. Two weeks after that, my mother and I went into the barn with tweezers. The barn cat had a tick, so she put the tweezers in the hay bale and went to the catch the old cat. Once we caught her, I told her to hand me the tweezers. She stood up and searched and searched. She couldn't find them. They weren't there. She picked up the bale and looked underneath it and on top of it and behind it. It'll they weren't there. We looked for the tweezers for ten minutes straight, and now she was mad. I said, The ghost probably took them. You should ask them back. But I said that as a joke. She then shouted, Please give me back my tweezers. A couple of minutes later, she went to go sit back down, and they were there, on top of the hay bale. We looked at each other and both in unison said, Thank you. But when she picked them up, they were bent. So we couldn't even use them, literally bent. We just went back inside and got a new set of tweezers and removed the tick later that day. When I play my piano, I will get the scent of a woman's perfume next to me for a couple of minutes. Then it'll just be gone, like she's coming to listen to me play doesn't really bother me. It was just the last time when I smelled rotten flesh behind me. I didn't dare look because I was too afraid. That was not a ghost in my house. That must be a mouse. But I press on. But then it started tapping in my chair and I could feel it. It was crawling under my chair. I jumped up and left because nope, 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 nope. I still see shadows from time to time and the people still listen to me play the piano. As long as it's the woman, it's okay because I know that she really enjoys it. Also, sorry, last thing. I play very complicated piano pieces and there's definitely a mouse in my house. 
My dog's got a job. Okay. I play very complicated piano pieces that are scary and sad at the same time. You might think this is not weird, but I don't play the piano. I can't read the music. And the music that I play is never, ever happy. The Woman in My House, Part 2 When I was younger, around four to six, we lived in my grandparents' house while we searched for an apartment. I can't pin this exactly on the paranormal, but I think it was because... What are the odds my sister and I shared a room and every night I woke up from 3.11 to 3.17 and always with a dead lay bug smashed under my neck? I remember it because it was every single night for like three years I lived there and every night there would be walking up and down the hallway. It would walk into each room like it was checking to make sure everything was okay. It was just plain odd. Now, I was super young, so I didn't really think anything of it, but as I got older, I realized that wasn't normal. You might think that's not bad, and after everything I've been through, it's not, but these next stories are much worse. After we moved out, we would visit occasionally. I would play the piano at her house. Now, my mother used to see a woman there in the house when she was a child, and I believe that I can feel that same woman there with me. This only happens when I'm alone, but it doesn't change how scary it is. I'll play the piano, and about five to ten minutes in, I'll hear a shuffle upstairs and then slow, heavy steps coming down the stairs, one by one, until she steps to the bottom of the stairs. She comes up behind me, and then I feel like she's harmful. It's weird. I know this sounds crazy, but it's like a game. The faster I play, the faster she comes down the stairs. I have to turn around when she gets too close, so she goes back further. One day I was at her house alone and I was playing the piano. I could feel the woman near, so I said aloud, Hello, missus. Then I started to play. One minute later I felt this really scary feeling come over me and I stopped playing. As I did, I heard the woman whisper in my ear, Hi. I turned. No one was there. Then, as I went to turn back toward the piano, I saw her in the reflection of the window behind me. That's when I knew it was really bad. I ran to the kitchen, which was like ten steps away, and then I stopped, and I looked back to where I saw her, and I said to myself, Don't run, don't show your fear, that's what it wants. So I sat down at the table. I started to play this little psychic game, like a matching game or whatever, and I feel this feeling again, this overwhelming fear. Then my heels started to tingle. Over the span of 15 seconds, I could feel this intense pressure on my heel like someone squishing it. And then I said aloud, stop. Then the pressure stopped. Then it bit me. I screamed, turned, and remembered to not show fear. So I said, guess I'll just see you guys later. Bye. Ran out of there real quick. I looked down at my heel, but there was no marks or signs of getting bitten, but it still hurt. I know what it was was a pair of human teeth. So now when I play the piano, I make sure to, well, that she stays far, far away. Not today, Satan. The Woman in My House, Part 3 I've only lived in three houses my entire life. All three were haunted. I was starting to think it was a coincidence, but maybe she's just following me wherever I go. The experiences differ, like different kinds of ghosts, but I can't help but think it's her. I'll be telling you today about the second house I lived in. It was in an apartment in a pretty big apartment complex with lots of land. There was this trail that after walking past the apartments and storage places, you could see a path. After following the path on both sides, you have a cornfield and a forest. We used to play there in the summer. My sister and I would run around the cornfield away from my father, and he would try to find us. It was a perfectly normal game. I remember one time, though, I was running through the corn, and I stopped. 
thought I heard breathing, so I started to move slowly the other way, and then stopped to see if I could hear it again. I didn't hear the breathing, but I saw the corn moving, and I could hear it too. I naturally thought it was my father, so I ran. Kept doing this for ten minutes straight until I ran out of the cornfield and heard my dad shouting from the opposite direction of where I thought he was. I went over there, and my sister was with him. Where were you? he asked. He was irritated. Apparently, he had been yelling for me for a while. I didn't hear a thing. I told him I'd forgotten my shoes. Well, perhaps in that cornfield. But he wouldn't let me even go back. Still don't understand that. Just let me get my shoes. I guess it didn't hit me until later that whatever was chasing me in that cornfield wasn't my dad or my sister. I was completely alone. The next one happened pretty much every night after I had my own room. I was, I guess, like seven at that time. And that's when this started. I just got my own room and I was happy about it. But not at night. There was this closet in my room. It was super creepy and always scared me. But I never used it. It was hard for me to fall asleep. But I did. Eventually. It was the morning that was scary. I woke up and all my stuffed animals that I had on top of me and on the other side of the couch were on the ground. Whoa, on the ground, so scary. Pfft. Well, they were on the ground, but in a perfect circle around my bed. I instantly thought it was my mother that did this. I asked her and she told me that she didn't. My mother never played pranks on us because she grew up in a haunted house herself and didn't want to scare us. If she did do it, if she would have confessed... I then went to go ask my dad. He was asleep. I peeked in my sister's room and she was asleep too. So I waited for them to wake up. They both denied it. The next night, same thing happened. I woke up to the stuffed animals all staring at me. Perfect circle around my bed. Same thing I asked who did it and no one confessed. After a week of that happening, I begged them to tell me if it was them. I knew it wasn't. No one confessed, of course, and this continued for six years until we moved out every morning. In that house, there were some scary things, and I knew that there was someone else there, even at my young age. I would sleepwalk, and I don't do that now. It stopped once we moved. I used to walk down the stairs and sleep on the couch in the pitch-black living room at night. I even talked to my mom when this happened sometimes. Usually she would ask if I was okay and I would tell her that I was just fine. But I don't remember any of that. I just remember waking up on the couch. Shadow person or ghost? Just a preface. I'm a 23-year-old male and I've had many encounters throughout my life especially as a child. I've not had any experiences for over four years until three days ago. There have been many issues in my family, and they severely affect me. My younger siblings and my dad, which is, well, it's causing a lot of strife and pain. I recently rented room at my cousin's place. A few days after moving in, I woke up. Maybe it was just a dream to a person standing in the corner saying that they were sorry. I keep the door locked as there's a person living in the room across the hallway. I do not usually remember my dreams. I have thought to myself that I would like a nightmare every so often in order to feel something that wasn't sadness or indifference. This particular night I would wake up for a second, adjust myself, and go back to sleep. This happened four times. On the last time I saw a masculine figure in the dark. It had an unnerving grin and began to whisper a certain word, which I do not remember, and it had a slight lisp. Or, well, I guess I just remember waking up soon after. I had this strange feeling and a slight tinge of fear. I sleep with my television at the foot of my bed to watch movies and play video games while laying down. The head of my bed is to the left of a window. That was a little light that, well... It was so I could see my reflection in the TV screen, Donut. And it was black except for where the TV was, which was white. 
I stared into my black TV screen for a few seconds, thinking about what occurred, and I saw a roundish shadowed shape like a head where the light was. I stared at the shadow thinking it was my head. I had just woken up and was taken back by a dream, so I wasn't all there. I guess whatever that shadow belonged to noticed I was staring at its reflection and just vanished. That's when I froze. The round shape wasn't there anymore. So I stuck out my arm as far as it went until it showed up on my screen. That is when I confirmed that it truly wasn't my shadow. I instantly had the urge to take a huge dump, which happens whenever I'm super nervous or afraid. I ran out of the room to use the restroom and stayed fixed on the toilet for an hour trying to take everything in. Or out. This has never happened to me before. I've seen solid apparitions before, and I've seen objects moved seemingly by themselves. The thing that's interesting is that it must have been solid since it had a shadow and all. I also live on the second floor, and the backyard is fenced off. Has anyone had a similar experience? What could it have been, other than the end of tonight's episode? See ya.